Just a disclaimer, I wrote, recorded, and edited most of the video before Turkey Tom's response, so please do keep that in mind. And I will be putting my short analysis of his video at the end. So a lot has been going on recently, and after all the allegations and responses and such, I want to take a look back at Pyrocynical, his videos, his internet personality, and what the future of the commentary community and Pyrocynical's channel might look like. So let's start with the history of Pyrocynical's channel. On March 30th, 2014, he made his first video called How to Pizza, and it was an MOG montage parody. And if you don't know what that is, it's pretty much just high effort crap posting. On October 30th, 2015, he switched to more of a commentary style video that he is more known for today. And on September 5th, 2017, he released his famous Petscop video, which was the first on his long high effort analysis videos. And starting from 2017, he uploaded once in a while these almost an hour long sometimes analysis videos. Starting from 2019, these analysis videos became almost an integral part of Pyrocynical's channel. He started to make more of these. For example, he made one on Logan Paul's movie. He made one on this movie called The Cube. He also made an analysis video on Liza Koshy's show. And starting from 2020, this year, he began to upload a lot of these. Like almost half of his videos from this year are just these long high effort analysis videos. Like his Fat Cry 3 video, his whole analysis, the Fall Guys video, Shane Dawson movie analysis, Lele Pond movie analysis, he, ana he did one on a TikTok show. And I think these videos really scream quality over quantity. Because like some of these videos are an hour to even two hours long, right? Like his Far Cry 3 analysis video, that's two hours long. And it's not like he just, you know, speaks over and he just has like footage in the background or whatever. There is constant MOG montage parody kind of style editing that, you know, Pyrocynical does usually on his channel. And, and though that kind of editing style takes quite some effort, right? He needs to find the correct video clips and the audio and the sound effects for whatever like ironic meme he's going to do. And you know, that, that constitutes like a few seconds in the video. And he does that fairly often, like every 20 seconds or so. So to constantly do that kind of editing style in a, an hour or two hour long video, it's, it's quite impressive to say the least. I mean, just look at his two hour Far Cry 3 video. He first had to play hours of the original game because he did say he maxed out the entire game. He played all the side quests. So that would have taken hours at least. He had to write a two hour script, which, you know, he had to edit it and he had to revise all that. So that probably took a while too. He had to record two hours of audio and that's just of the final audio. So he probably took much more time actually with the outtakes and such. And then he had to edit the entire thing. And again, I've discussed how the editing would have taken a lot of effort. Not only that, it's not just like two hours long for the sake of it. There's so much good in-depth game analysis, there's character analysis, and there's a lot of analysis on just nuance of the story and all that, all while maintaining all two hours as entertaining. Even to someone who really didn't hear or care about the Far Cry franchise like me, I was very hooked. And the funny thing is, there's this kind of meme goes around like, oh, Pyrocynical likes money, right? But if you like money, you would be an absolute idiot to make these videos. Why would you spend weeks making these hour, two hour long videos that probably would just get demonetized, let's be honest, right? Because it's not like his other videos don't do good. Like his other videos do fine. And honestly, his other videos still have like a lot more effort than 99% of most YouTube videos. But even so, like his 10 to 20 minute commentary style videos, they do fine. Yet the number of movie analysis and video game analysis videos increased in the past year. Like, again, about half of his videos this year are these kind of vids. So, I think from there, most people who watched his channel kind of gained a certain level of respect. Like, the fact that he would do and make these videos out of his passion, probably, right? Because I don't think most people would do this for money. To do these videos out of passion was quite respectable. And then, well, we kind of know what happened this year, right? On October 29th, 2020, Ivory came out saying that Pyro groomed him. And I think if this event doesn't prove anything else, it does expose how these commentary channels are. Because if you're not familiar with what happened, the, these commentary channels really hopped on the bandwagon multiple times to the point where they would switch back and forth constantly. And 
I think this really reflects on how commentary channels are these days. Pyro's video response was literally just an extension of his Reddit post. Like he himself says, like he just wanted to clarify things, but what he said on his video was from mostly from his Reddit post. So, so then the question is like, why did these commentary channels switch sides so much if barely any information was getting added from the other part? And I think it's because these channels want to reach the trend as fast as possible without waiting to hear from the other side. And I'm not saying this to talk trash about these channels because I, for, for a certain, from a certain perspective, I understand why they're doing this. Okay. I don't think many of them had malicious intent with this. Like I said, oh, I, we want to take down Pyrocynical, right? Or at least most of them didn't have that malicious intent. These channels are YouTubers and they have to reach the trend first because as commentary channels, if you're late on a topic, then that may, doesn't get you as many views because everyone else already saw someone else's video on that topic. So you always have to reach the topic and the trend first, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't take the time to get all the information. Commentary should be about giving insightful, relevant information to help the viewers form the best opinions on the topic, especially when discussing sensitive topics like grooming allegations. I mean, whether Pyrocynical was innocent or not at the end, these commentary channels should have been much more careful when treading on grooming and pedophilia accusations. Like, this is a serious topic. These topics can ruin careers or they can honestly put people to jail at certain points so to go into these topics thinking like it's just another like oh like pokimane said something dumb on twitch like it, that that shouldn't be the mindset going into this it can ruin careers and reputation this was a serious topic and yet a lot of commentary channels kind of treated this as just a way to make extra videos as quickly as possible they really jumped on the bandwagon to say the least and they regurgitated just a popular opinion going around like i literally thought I was reading r slash unpopular opinion from Reddit as I was watching these videos. And I mean, after Parasynical's response, some commentary channels did apologize for their rapidness to jump on the bandwagon. And I don't think, you know, we should hate them too much for it. But I would say that the fact that a lot of these commentary channels did do this is worrying. It's not like Parasynical is completely innocent in this situation. Parasynical himself admits he made a mistake and he apologized in his response. And I don't think to give an opinion to whether Parasynical was innocent or not as these things were happening, I don't think that was bad. I think it's good for people to give opinions, especially for a commentary channel. Like you should give your own opinion. And if information changes, maybe you were wrong on your first take. And it's okay if you change your mind about it, right? We're all human. It's, it's okay to make honest, forgivable mistakes. But to jump on the bandwagon of a career-threatening claim like grooming or pedophilia without even waiting for a direct response from Pyro or actually analyzing the given data like the Reddit post that he posted, it's a huge mistake. And anyone who did this should apologize. And I'm not trying to throw shade at these commentary channels, okay? I, I enjoy watching various opinions on various topics. And I don't think all YouTube videos need to be as hyper edited or as high quality or with as much in-depth analysis as a lot of Pyrocynical's videos, right? Talking for 10 to 15 minutes over some game footage, it, it can still be entertaining. It can still be useful. It can still be insightful. And I don't think you should judge someone else if they're making a living off of doing something simple. But on the other hand, I think there has to be some level of research and some level of insight to these videos. I mean, these recent events really show that. By these channels trying to cover these events as hastily, as quickly as possible to be first on the trend, they've foregone any inclusion of true analysis or insight. And that even, like, even, that even compares to how Pyrocynical made his response. His Reddit response was released on November 10th. And Turkey Tom's videos, which were like the main focal point of the attack against Pyrocynical. His first video was released on December 1st, and then his second video was released on December 10th. And the one released on December 10th was especially against Pyrocynical with the Google Doc and everything. And that's when like most of the commentary channels, I think, jumped on that bandwagon and started to attack Pyrocynical. And it's kind of funny because I've heard from various commentary channels almost mocking Pyro or taking such a long time to respond saying, oh, you know, he, he's taking such a long time to respond, like, this is not good. This just makes him look more incriminating. 
when in fact, you should take some time to respond. You should take time to gather all the information, gather all the facts, and to provide an actual, logical explanation of what happened, to apologize for whatever you did wrong, and to defend yourself for whatever claims were incorrect. Pyrocynical took so much more time in constructing a well-formed response while everyone else was literally berating him. Like, his public opinion went horribly down. His subscriber counts were dropping. I mean, if it was anyone else, if it was me especially, I, I would try to release a video as soon as possible. But instead, he kept a level-headed response. He apologized for what he had to apologize for. He explained what he wanted to explain. So, in conclusion, I really do think we should thank Pyro for his efforts. I mean, he doesn't really need to put out this amount of high effort entertaining insightful content, but he does. And he took the time and effort to construct a well-formed response and apology. As he goes on, hopefully his viewers and other YouTubers can respect the amount of effort he puts into his videos and the care he has for his channel. And for commentary channels, I hope they learn something. I don't think we should send hate to these channels. Criticism is good, and that's what, you know, like, even right now, I am criticizing some of these commentary channels. But to send, you know, like, unhelpful hate, I think is completely incorrect. Well, hopefully they learned to actually provide insight without jumping on the bandwagon or into conclusions right away. And as a side note, to not be a hypocrite, I tried to look at the sources and the claims made from both sides. And I tried to approach them as unbiased as I possibly can. And I definitely do agree that Pyro made a lot of disgusting mistakes and he himself admits this but i strongly disagree with the words used as like groomer or pedophile i don't think those words are correct were correctly used in the first place and to th think that a lot of these people genuinely believed pyrocynical was a groomer or a pedophile is kind of insane i think these words were only thrown around as charged words to you know draw attention and i don't think we can ever definitively prove a pyro did or did not know Ivory's age when he was 15. And in my opinion, I think Pyro's defense regarding the situation, like his arguments about the Twitter suspension during the times and dating Ida two years later after the conversation she had with Ivory about his age and all that kind of stuff, like I think it does help make a strong claim for Pyro's unknowingness in the situation. And I, I do think probably more is going to come out about Pyro from Keemstar and Turkey Tom, which I'm not really looking forward to because I feel like at this point it's just beating a dead horse. Like, it, it, the drama's done. Pyro came out, he apologized for what he had to. But that's it. If you have any comments, if you agree or disagree, please do put them in the comments down below. Like or subscribe if you so desire. And I'll see you next time. So Turkey Tom released a response just a moment ago, and while I agree that Pyrocynical did a lot of stupid things, like not checking his age and continuing to speak with Ivory even after he found out he was 16 and all that kind of stuff, Pyro himself admitted to these claims. And Tom's response tries to argue that Pyrocynical is trying to paint himself as the victim, and that this therefore negates his apology. And again, what the things he did were degenerate. But words like groomer and pedophile were being thrown around, and the Google Doc that Tom made was quite on the offensive of Pyro being a groomer. Now, I understand that the Doc never outright said this, and this is something Tom says in his own video. But most of the claims that was in the Doc pretty much implies that that was the Doc's intention. Especially things like comparing Pyro to Red Kiwis, who is an actual pedophile groomer. Like, how would Pyro think otherwise of the Doc? And yes, I know that Tom apologized for comparing Pyro to Red Kiwis in his video. But it's not like Pyro would know that while he was making a response. So it's completely justified for, for Pyro to believe that the doc was accusing him of grooming. However, Tom uses Pyrocynical's annoyance of these grooming allegations and uses that to negate Pyro's apology, saying his apology is disingenuous. Pyro himself made a mistake on how he approached Ivory, and that was wrong. But Tom, and I would say to an extent the rest of the commentary community that jumped on this bandwagon, they made a mistake of essentially calling Pyro a groomer. Again, this might not have been Tom's intention as he was writing the doc, and Tom did apologize for some aspects of his claims, but I mean, if we're completely honest, like the, the doc really does paint Pyro as a groomer. No matter what the final verdict is or anything, 
a lot of the evidence and a lot of the claims that the doc makes is quite on the offensive, as I've mentioned before. And I don't think it's fair to say that it was just left for interpretation. But I think the drama's finally over. I mean, unless some new, really incriminating information comes up, I don't think any more progress is going to be made on this drama. So, um, hopefully this is it. Uh, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.